Today I figured I'd show you my bioactive avarium, which I have two dart frogs in, and uh, perhaps do a video of a little bit of uh, my standard maintenance on it. Let's get into it. Okay, everybody, so this is my 20-gallon bioactive vivarium. It houses two dart frogs, which are uh, Dendrobates tinctorius robertos. So they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, they're a little too young to know whether or not I have a pair or two males or two females. Um, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, but it's been doing really well. This vivarium's been running for about six months now. The frogs have been in here for about three, so I let it age about three months before we uh, before I put the frogs in. Uh, the nice thing about a bioactive setup like this with the live plants and it's uh, the soil is seeded with springtails and uh, dwarf white isopods is that it, uh, it turns over and processes all of the frogs waste as part of the natural processes. I never actually have to get in there and clean much of anything in there. Um, or I should say in terms of turning over any of the, um, the substrate or anything like that, it's all a natural process. So my process for cleaning this is actually very simple. Um, all I do is I spray a little uh, deionized water on the glass. And the nice thing about that is it doesn't leave any streaks and just use a plain old paper towel and clean off the front glass. Now you can see this was an old aquarium. It's got some old scratches on it. I just kind of use what I have. I'm a big believer in uh, reusing stuff as much as possible. And that is all that's needed to get the front glass clean. Then we're gonna do a little bit of plant trimmings and then that's about it really. I mean, there's really not much more to do in a setup like this. So you can see there's a few dead plants in there. Well, not dead plants, I should say dead fronds or fronds that are struggling. Anytime you have a plant in any kind of uh, enclosure, this is true of aquariums as well as in uh, vivariums like this. Anytime you've got fronds that uh, aren't doing too well, you're just as well cutting them out because once you've got a damaged frond, it's very rare that it's going to come back. As a matter of fact, most of the time they just don't. So you're better off just cutting it out and um, allowing the plant to save the nutrients for healthy leaves or fronds. And that way you don't um, waste any of the energy and um, it encourages new growth. So I'm actually trimming a plant here. It's called a rabbit's foot fern. If you look underneath, you can actually see here, let's try to lift that up. You can see where the rhizome of the plant actually grows these uh, hairy fingers. They say look like rabbit's feet. I actually think they look kind of like tarantula legs, but either way, they're super, super cool. Oh, my fan popped off. So I got a little fan there, that suction cup to the, uh, suction cup to the glass that helps uh, circulate a little air in there. And it just goes on for about 30 minutes twice a day. That's it. Uh, cause I don't want to introduce too much fresh air because I don't want to, uh, encourage the humidity to drop too much. And I basically collect these. Now these could be left in here and just break down, um, along with the other, uh, greenery. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll probably do that this time. Uh, there's really no compelling reason to take them out completely, but I do want to separate them from the host plant, um, just to make sure that I'm leaving room for the, uh, healthier fronds. To grow so anything that's browning and anything that looks like it is seen better days gets hacked out of there and i encourage fresh growth all right well i think i got a healthy one there there we go that's the one i was looking for and you cut all of these guys out to make sure we are leaving room for the fresh stuff to grow up. It's gonna be that one and that one. I think, up oh, one more here. We're gonna get rid of this guy. And that, I think, is pretty good for at least this one here. These guys still look okay. They're in good shape. A little bit of yellowing here and there, but it's okay. Well, let's take care of this palm over here. You just cut it fairly low. Now on the palm fronds, you'll see that there's like a secondary sh uh, shoot coming up right next to the part where I'm cutting. That's actually a new leaf coming up. So you don't want to cut that. You just want to cut the part that goes as low 
as the section that you're trying to cut while still leaving the runner for sort of the next generation of leaf, if you will. And that makes sure that everything it grows up beautifully. I think that's probably about all the trimming this needs right now, which is pretty good. Uh, now that I look at it, I think I will go ahead and pull these scraps out just to give it kind of a cleaner look. So just pick everything up. And that is that. And that is literally all I need to do. Now, once or twice a day, depending on the humidity that I'm able to keep, I spray the whole enclosure, get a little bit of water in there, and that helps raise the humidity and encourages um, the epiphytes to make sure that they're getting enough moisture. So that would be the uh, bromeliads. I have a terrestrial bromeliad right here. This was the actual parent bromeliad that sent this pup off, and then I removed it and replanted it, um, as well as I have some moss growing. And that moss is actually just a simple, uh, uh, I think it's weeping moss out of my aquarium. Uh, it can be grown uh, immersed or submerged. So I actually cut some out of my aquarium, put it in there, and um, that was that. It was actually a really easy process. And this is just built out of a simple 20 gallon high. Nothing special here. So I, um, you could find a million and one videos on YouTube how to do this. But I laid some cork bark on the back and I uh, actually made a large piece of cork half round in the center here, this piece into a planter that actually has some soil inside of it and then use the spray foam silicon and cocoa fiber on top of the silicon to give it that look and then of course we have a false bottom underneath with a water feature uh, the water here on the bottom of the aquarium i have a little pond feature i actually only change that water about once a month there's plenty of biological activity going on there to make sure that water is clean and processed but about once a month, the tannins build up and I like to give it kind of a fresh look. So I'll go ahead and drain it out of there. And I'll actually show you how I did that. When I built this, I put a small drain right there. I don't know if you can see that in my finger, but there's a small drain under there that enables me to get a siphon hose in there underneath the false bottom and pull all the water out and then replace it again. Uh, without ever disturbing anything in there. And I actually never even have to touch the pond itself. And everything else is a piece of cake. So um, that's it. That is all the maintenance needed in a bioactive vivarium. It's a fantastic thing to watch and grow. And as interesting as the frogs are, I have to say the plants are probably just as interesting. So I'm gonna show you some more footage of the, um, the setup itself. And if you have any questions, make sure to let me know in the comments. Thanks a million and we'll catch you next time.